Whoa, it like shrank the screen and now I have to lean way forward. That's annoying. Okay, so somebody posted a video about making cordage in the wild, about using raw materials and making cord to tie something off. I'm not a fan of the phrase bushcraft. I'm, I just don't like the phrase. I'm not even going to go into the politics. But I grew up doing a lot of this natural stuff and I want to show you how easy it is to make cordage because I watched the video that got put up and it was about 18 steps too complicated. So I pulled up another video and another video and then I pulled up a website that went over step by step and I don't know why I don't know if it's just the way people learn or if I learned differently or what, but it's way too complicated the way they're showing it. So I'm going to show you the way I was taught and I'm going to show you with a couple of different pieces of things. I have some wild grass and some willow, which I may or may not get to. I have some blackberry that I'm not going to demo today. If like five or ten people say, please show me how to do it with blackberry, then I'll demo blackberry, but I like my fingertips a little too much. I'm going to show you with some cloth, I'm going to show you with some polyester, I'm going to show you with some corn husks, and I'm going to show you with wool, okay? So to start with, the easiest way to teach somebody is with paper, okay? No, it's not durable, but you can do this with wrapping paper and make a really, really pretty cord, okay? And it is really strong, it's just not durable. So I'm going to show you already established, and then I'm going to show you starting, okay? And I'm not the best at the instructions, but we'll see if we can do this. Twist away. Okay, twist away from you and then loop towards and then you have to pinch where you put that twist in or you'll have to put the twist in again. Twist away and loop towards. Okay, that's all you have to remember in making any kind of cordage with any kind of material. Twist away, loop towards. Twist away loop towards. Now in that amount of time I made that much cording. Okay? And see it doesn't untwist. Now get this wet, it's gone. But like I said, for, for decorative purposes you can do this with wrapping paper and it looks really cool. And it's a use of leftover wrapping paper. I was going to bring a garbage bag in here. You can do this with grocery store garbage bags, the plastic ones, and make a really strong cord. Okay? Cut your plastic in this same amount of strip and you can make cord out of a plastic bag. Now I'm going to show you how to start. So I have two strips of paper and I'm going to put them together and I'm going to separate them and I have a pinch right here. Now when I was taught, the person who taught me had long grass and they looped it over a pole and they started working until they were done so that they could work away and then they just snipped it off. Okay. So loop over a pole like this so that you don't have to hold on to this constantly. Okay. Um, over a tree stick. That's going to drive me nuts just for the record. So that's something to, to keep in mind. But you start out by pinching. Pinch tight. Pinch tight. Put your finger in the middle and hold on to this one. Twist away. Okay, until you get a nice tight twist going. You don't want to lose twist, it won't work. Nice tight twist going. And then loop towards. Hold on. Twist away. Can you see that? And then loop towards. Twist away. And loop towards. Now there's plenty of videos on splicing. And the biggest thing they say when they talk about splicing is to lay your splice over so that the end sticks out and keep going and then trim. That works. If you lay your, your, your splice over, I don't have, if you lay your splice over, twist it in and then bend down, it looks better, but you now have a splice point that's a breaking point. Okay, so it depends on how durable you need it. Your choice. Anyway, 
So in that amount of time, I made that one inch, okay? Again, paper, what you're looking for in things that you twine, the things that you, you do. Okay, so this is corn husk. Now, you know the big, long corn grass leaves? You can do that entire length. And you cut it into pieces and do that entire length. And one stalk of corn can make you a huge amount of rope, okay? Now, this is... Rope comes, this kind of rope comes in a couple of, of categories. Durable, not durable, and seasonal. This is seasonal. It'll last one or two years. The sun will make it more and more brittle. Okay? So, I have all that. And I'm going to divide it into two groups. So I have one group in one hand. And I'm going to twist. Okay? and I'm gonna twist, and I'm gonna come across, and I'm gonna hold. What you're looking for is things that have strings in them, bast, okay? Um, plantain has strings. Hemp has strings. Nettle has strings. Braiding nettle is a bitch. Braiding nettle is an incredible bitch. I don't recommend braiding nettle. You can ret nettle and flax to remove the green matter. My experience with retting flax and with retting nettle is it takes seven to 10 days. And it goes like this. Wow, not done. 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 Oh, rotten. You got about a six hour window in the middle of a day where it's perfect. Uh, it's not worth it to me. Okay, so in this amount of time I did this, now, let's see how this, see how it's not holding as tight? See how it's not binding itself together? Okay. You can do it with this, but you've got to tie it off and let, because this is wet. I should clarify that. This is wet. It was soaked in water. If you let it dry, still bound, it's permanent, but it's only going to last a season. That corn grass is only going to last a season, whereas cane grass, this kind of shit, okay, we went down to a local lake and grabbed some of this. This will last one to maybe two years once you've made it, okay? So you can tie off your bindings, but you've got to refresh them every year or two. Jute, that's gonna last longer. Something made from cedar bark fibers, that's gonna last 10 years, okay? Um, hemlock, I do believe has fibers. Willow, which I have there. Okay, see how I'm, I'm just twisting and turning. And I've got to move my hand. Twisting. The tighter the twist, the more durable it is. And turning. Twisting and turning. And turning. And see, it's not unwinding. Okay, because it wasn't soaked in water that made it slippery. See? And with this right here, I could make 30 feet of cordage. And it's a good durable cordage. I mean, you're not, you're not breaking that easy. See that? Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. So I have minor health problems and I'm not supposed to do shit like that. With willow. Let's find one that's workable, that's easy. Yeah, that one will work. With willow. The best way to do this is inside of this willow is this really nice white wood. So you get a bucket of water and you soak this in water overnight. Then you have a second bucket of water, three buckets of water total. You peel this outer shell off. This outer shell is what you're gonna to use to make cord. You put that in a bucket of water, bucket of water. You put the white back into another bucket of water and you have the bucket of water you're working out of. When you've completely stripped everything, take the white and make wreaths and make little furniture things and make cool things out of it because it's really cool wood that bends. You can, you can if you soak it, bend it and make curly cues and all kinds of stuff, okay? Then when you're done working with the white, come back to the bucket full of this stuff, the, the outer shell stuff, and make your cordage. 
okay? It should be your last project, not your first project, unless you're in the wild and you're desperate and you need to make cordage. If that happens, Willow is your friend. Now, I have rock hard fingernails because I have kidney disease, which means I strip with my nails, but you don't. So take your knife. Don't work towards yourself. I'm trying to figure out best angle. I do sloppy knife habits and I don't want to show them on camera. So, and it peels unless it wants to prove me a liar. Okay, so all of this crunky stuff isn't gonna peel. So I need to get to a nice clean spot. And it peels. This may have been off of the tree too long. Okay, so it peels. Okay, and once you get it started, it's great. An easier way, take a hammer and break it up and then it'll peel easier but then you've damaged that wood but you can peel four to six inches at a time <sighs> quite frequently i can peel six inches at a time but it's got to be fresh off the tree or soaked in water and this has been way too long which i should have known let's see if we can get this one started Nah, it's been off the tree too long. But you get the idea. You can't twist this. But you get the idea. That's willow. There is blackberry. You can make really good cord from blackberry. Like I said, I'm not going to demo that today for a very obvious reason. Do you see those suckers? This is proper Marion berry, which is a hybrid. They're specific type of blackberry that was created here in Marion County, Oregon. Um, I think it was created for its, its evil needles. The easiest way to get these needles off is outside with the back of your knife and just scraping backwards with the back of your knife so you're not cutting in. Again, hit it with a hammer five or six times to split it into four or five splits and then take out the pith and then you're good to go. I'm not showing that. Mostly I just wanted to show the newspaper. The hubby wanted me to show some cloth. There's only two of these here. Were you going to do a third? Oh, yeah. To show you triple? Really? Yeah, there's another one. Okay. So, this is three, and it works the same as the two. Twist away. Yeah, I can get on camera. Twist away. Cross over both. Twist away. You're not braiding. Twist away, get it as tight as you can get it. Cross over both. Now note that I'm holding the two that have twists in them. Okay, twists away. And this will probably unwind itself because this cloth is very, very slick feeling in my hand. So I don't know that this will be a durable twist without sewing it, the, the top part closed. But in the field, in an emergency, you can use cloth. Okay, so that's what you're getting. And yet yeah, it is durable. It didn't start to unwind itself. Okay, so you would get a nice thick rope out of this. It would take me about an hour to do the whole time thing and I'm not time lapsing this or anything like that. But see how that's durable, how it's not unwinding itself. Okay, so you can sit there and then you can add in extra and you can add in extra. So in the field, in a crisis, this is a really good option. You can cut it smaller than this to get a smaller thing, but you've got to consider the strength of the fibers going this way. And if you cut it too, too small, it's just going to fall apart. So there's that. My favorite. This is Pillow Guts from A Dead Pillow. Okay, I like my pillow guts. I spin pillow guts. Okay, this is nylon, basically. This is an incredibly strong rope. The husband was playing tug of war with it the other day. Um, again, hold, spin away, roll away, cross over, spin away, cross over, spin away, cross over. Do you see how easy that is once you get into the pattern? Okay, so if you're in a crisis 
and you need really good, really strong rope, this is what I would use. I would actually pull out the stuffing from a pocket. Okay? I would be careful where I pulled stuffing out of because I might need the stuffing for insulation, but I'd figure out something that had stuffing I didn't need for insulation, and I would use this. That would be my choice. I was experimenting. Where did it go? So this one right here, this is alpaca. Not only is this alpaca, but this is mid-grade rug alpaca. This is not for spinning into beautiful yarns like my beautiful yarns, okay? This is a fiber that has... Alpaca is incredibly slick. It has no barbs. It does not like to hold on to itself in spinning. And this particular alpaca has a half-inch staple, okay? It's incredibly small, bad cuts, okay? So this is barely useful for, for spinning. Barely something I would try to spin, okay? But... For rope, if I can get it started, I'm not promising I can get this one started because alpaca hates you. Alpacas hate you. You know this, right? They want to kill you. They are looking forward to the alpaca apocalypse. And cross. This is so slick. It's like, like snot. But once you twine it, it does hold on. Okay. So, you can use something that you wouldn't think would hold on. And that made a really strong, durable rope. I'm going to, over the next year, use... This is half of a churro lamb fleece. Churro is a species of sheep that was bred by the Navajo and the Hopi. And it's used in the rugs. And... You can see that it has a longer staple, and it likes to cling to itself, okay? It, it has those barbs that the alpaca doesn't have. So if I hold on here, if I hold on here, and I hold on here, and I start the spin. Let's take that off because you're extra. And I start the spin. My thought is I want to make a whole bunch of proper rope. And we made horsehair rope when I was a kid once, and it's a three-person operation. It's this exact same process, okay? But you have one person holding on, one person spinning one side, and one person holding on to the other side. And it's it was fun. I was a kid. But I had the thought I want to make a wool rope. i got to pull some of this out. Okay, see, this holds on, and it doesn't want to let go. Ouch. And yeah, this has lanolin in it too, so it's kind of tacky. So, like that. See? Now, if I had spun this on a spindle and I let go, it would completely unravel. Okay? You have to set the spin when you're working with a spindle by getting it wet. And if you get any of this wet, it will set the spin and it'll be even more durable afterwards. But that right there should be capable of handling almost my body weight. I'm not going to tell you how much that is. Okay? So that's pretty much my my overview of how to make cordage. The basics. Again, twist away as tight as you can get it. Grab this. Loop over. Grab that. Twist away as tight as you can get it. See? Practice with paper. Wrapping paper. Okay? You'll make really pretty cord. Practice with plastic. The garbage bag plarn. That's what we call it. It's plarn. Plastic yarn. Okay, I just made an inch that fast. Okay? That's my thing on making cordage. Will I do this whole mass, mass up? Probably. I need to soak the willow to get the willow to split right, though. I had thought that I had it soaked long enough, but it came out a couple hours ago, and it's been sitting, and it's warm in here, and yeah, it didn't, you know? Eh. Anyway, I will talk to you later.